As we start our arterial blood gas course, I want to start by helping you understand what is included in an ABG and why we use ABGs in our patients. Sometimes ABGs can be very intimidating because there's a lot of values to look at, but hopefully this will help to kind of demystify it for you. So first, and probably the most obvious, is that an arterial blood gas isn't obtained from an artery. So that could be a, a direct stick into the radial artery or the brachial artery here or even the femoral artery. Now, your patient might even have an indwelling arterial line that we've connected to a monitor and we're monitoring their blood pressure. So it's just important that you know your state and facility policies. For example, in Texas, nurses can obtain arterial samples from direct sticks in the radial artery, but in South Carolina, we're not allowed to. The respiratory therapist has to do it. And then in most cases, the femoral sticks are typically done by a provider. So just make sure that you know what you're allowed to do in your facility. Now, we want to get arterial blood specifically because it's going to give us completely different results than venous blood. So think about it. Your blood flows out of your heart and it flows into your lungs to pick up oxygen. And then it flows out through the arteries into the rest of your body. So the blood in the arteries is fully oxygenated. So it's going to tell you the full oxygen capacity of the patient. If we get venous blood, a lot of that oxygen has already been dropped off in the tissues, right? So we want to be able to see it in the arteries. We can also get to see our acid base balance, again, in the full capacity of the patient. So what we're getting are systemic results. It completely eliminates what I call tissue factors. In other words, there's things that could happen at the tissue level that affect the patient's ability to oxygenate. So this blood gas value looks at the patient's ability to oxygenate and their acid base balance before the tissues get involved. It's like running a diagnostic on a car. We're not trying to find out how much damage has already been done. We're trying to figure out what's not working or what could go wrong before it actually causes damage. Okay. So let's just review the possible things that can be found on an arterial blood gas. First, we have pH. This specifically stands for partial pressure of hydrogen or hydrogen ions. Now, really quickly, I want to clarify what partial pressure means. You know, with any other blood level, we're thinking concentration, right? Well, partial pressure is the same thing, except it's the concentration of a gas that is dissolved in the blood plasma. So it's basically the concentration of hydrogen, except because hydrogen is a gas, we have to take a pressure as opposed to a physical measurement. So it's basically the same thing. So all of these things, the hydrogen, the CO2, the oxygen, they're measured using partial pressure. Okay, so our normal pH value is 7.35 to 7.45. Now, a high hydrogen concentration actually corresponds to a lower pH. So anything less than 7.35 is considered acidosis. So excess hydrogen equals acidosis. A low hydrogen level is a high pH, so anything greater than 7.45 is considered alkalosis. So a low hydrogen level, hydrogen ion concentration, is alkalosis, okay? Then we have PCO2, also sometimes written PaCO2 to indicate that it's arterial. This is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood. Now, I always write this one backwards so that I can remember. 45 to 35. So the same numbers, but backwards. So the normal PaCO2 is 35 to 45. And the reason that I write this backwards is so that you can correlate it with the pH. Higher than 45 is acidosis. Less than 35 is alkalosis. Okay, so CO2 equals acid. Then the third thing that you will pick up is bicarb or bicarbonate, also written HCO3. Bicarb equals base. So anytime you think bicarb, I want you to correlate that with base in your mind. And the normal bicarb value is 22 to 26. Now, where is CO2 regulated from? Our lungs, right? So every time we breathe out, our lungs breathe out CO2. 
Well, bicarb specifically is regulated by our kidneys. So if we have too much bicarb, the kidneys will excrete more. If we need more bicarb, the kidneys will hold on to it. So CO2 is acid, bicarb is base. We can also look at oxygenation status. For that, we're going to use PaO2 and SaO2. So PaO2 is, again, partial pressure of oxygen dissolved in arterial blood plasma. That's what that A is for, is in our arteries. This is literally how much oxygen is dissolved in our arterial blood. So normal is 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. And I want to make one thing super, super clear here. And that is that this normal value is assuming that the patient is on room air. Room air is 21% oxygen. And we write that FiO2. Okay. So if the patient has a PaO2 of 90, but they are on 100% oxygen, that is not normal. Okay. The second oxygenation method we have is the SaO2 or the saturation of oxygen in the arterial blood. This refers to how much of our hemoglobin is fully saturated with oxygen. Remember that each hemoglobin molecule can hold four oxygen molecules. So what percentage of those hemoglobins are totally full of oxygen? Normal is 95 to 100%, but as we'll talk about in a later lesson, this is not super reliable all the time. So make sure you check out the oxygenation lesson later in this course. Now there's a few other things that we can receive in an ABG besides our acid base balance and our oxygenation. One is lactic acid. The normal value is 0.5 to one millimoles per liter. And an elevated level indicates that there's some kind of anaerobic metabolism going on. Maybe it's sepsis or some perfusion issues. Another is the base excess or base deficit. This measures the presence of extra bases in our blood. And normal is from negative 2 to positive 2. A positive number indicates more base and a negative number indicates less base or a base deficit. And finally, in many cases, you can actually get electrolyte levels like potassium on your ABG. Now, this is not the number one purpose of an ABG, but it can be a much faster way to grab a potassium level than waiting for a whole chemistry to result. So it's good for you to know that it's possible. Just be aware that you have to have an order for it, and you usually have to specifically request it. So just make sure you know that. Now, one thing I really want you guys to understand before we start talking about interpretation is that our bodies have two main ways to physiologically regulate our acid-base balance. But before either of these kick in, our body has some compensatory mechanism that will help temporarily. But if things get out of hand, these two big regulators will kick in, respiratory and metabolic. So in terms of abnormalities, we could see a respiratory acidosis or a respiratory alkalosis, or we could see a metabolic acidosis or a metabolic alkalosis. So respiratory regulation is controlled by the lungs. Again, the lungs breathe out CO2 with every breath. This will kick in within minutes to help start adjusting that pH very quickly. As we said before, CO2 is associated with more acid. So if we're in an acidosis state, we'll breathe off more CO2. If we need more acid, we will hold on to it and we'll breathe a little bit less. Problem is our lungs can only handle these crazy breathing patterns for so long. So that's where metabolic regulation comes in. Metabolic regulation is controlled by our kidneys. Like I said before, they will either excrete or retain this bicarb based on what's going on in the body. So if the body's too acidic, they'll hang on to it. Remember, bicarb equals base. And then vice versa, if it's too alkaline, the kidneys will excrete more bicarb to reduce the base. The problem is this actually takes a few days for our kidneys to really kick in and for this metabolic compensation to kick in. Now we'll talk more about each of these regulation methods when we look at each of the four main conditions that I listed here. But first, we're gonna look at a couple different ways to interpret an ABG to figure out which condition we're even looking at. So to recap, 
make sure that you understand the purpose for an ABG, which is to get some systemic information about acid-base balance and oxygenation and to kind of run like a diagnostic on our body. What's really going on? Make sure you know what values are included and what they mean. For the extra ones like lactic acid or electrolytes, sometimes you have to specifically ask for those to be run. So make sure that you know what you want ahead of time. So understanding all of these things is going to help form like the basis and the foundation for your ability to actually interpret an ABG. So in the next few lessons, we're going to look deeper at interpreting a blood gas and how to understand what's really going on with your client. Okay. So I hope this little introduction to ABG Labs was helpful. I'm excited for you guys to dive in and learn more about how to interpret them and how to care for patients with abnormalities. Make sure you check out all of the resources attached to this lesson as well as the rest of the course. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.